welcome to our webinar. My name is Andrew Townsend. I'm the Campaign Marketing Manager here at eLearning Brothers. Today's session is going to be about Adobe Illustrator. We're going over five Illustrator tips and tricks, and we hope that you uh, really enjoy what we've got to share. This session will be recorded. We will email a copy of it out to everybody who has registered, so you can be looking for that in your email. We'll also post this on our blog uh, probably early next week. If you have questions during the webinar, please do use the questions panel. That is part of the GoToWebinar uh, control panel, and we'll get to as many of your questions as we can. All right, so we have a fantastic guest with us today. We've got Nick Brown, the Director of Product and Design. Thanks for joining us, Nick. We're excited to hear what you have to share, and without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and pass the screen over to you and uh, give you the time. Thank you, Andrew. Okay. All right, I see the illustrator. Perfect. All right, hey everybody. Um, before um, I get into some of these things, I uh, just want to go over um, um, a few notes. Uh, so I'm using um, Illustrator on a Mac, um, and it is the most um, um, up-to-date version. Um, I've also uh, kind of changed my, my own workspace around. So if you don't see all of these tools, um, it's because I have my own set. Um, uh, I'm going to probably be using a lot of keyboard shortcuts because uh, it makes things go a lot faster and easier. And I will try to um, announce those as I use them. Um, do you think you and, could take a moment at, at the beginning here to show us what the actual default looks like? I think it's pretty easy to switch your workspace. So I think um, Essentials is usually what it, um, but I, I probably changed it around when I opened it first, and so it probably reset <laughs> that itself. Okay. So it looks like most of the stuff does stay, most of the panels do stay in the same spot, um, but you've made some sections more predominant and more uh, accessible right away. Yes, yep. Okay, so I reset it, and so that's usually how it looks, I think, on, on start. Um, um, and then, um, so I'm only gonna go over five tips uh, and tricks. However, we could very easily spend probably an hour on all of them, um, or I mean, on each one. Um, but my goal with this is to uh, just kind of show you the basics so that then you can take what you've learned and go on your own and explore um, and and see what things you are able to, um, um, to do with all the options. Um, okay, so let me get started with number one, um, how to warp text to shapes. So in Illustrator, there are some pre-built shapes uh, that you uh, can use. And uh, there's a few ways to get to those. Um, and the first one, if um, I select my text that I have here, and I go up to Effect and Warp, then these are all their pre-built shapes they have. So if I just click on Arc, you can see that with the preview, um, I can change these options here, horizontal to vertical. I can change the amount of bend that I want it to do, both up and down. Um, and then we also skew it side to side and top to bottom. Um, so you, you can get some pretty crazy shapes out of these. Um, and then you can go through each of these and see what they all do. Let me actually reset these so you get an idea better uh, how these look. Just so you have an idea what things there are. Okay, so I'm gonna go to Arc, uh, just like that, hit OK. Um, and my text is still text, so if I wanna change this, just click into it, add in my text, and it will adjust uh, that Arc um, effect. Um, the other way to do it, uh, if you go up to Object, and then Envelope um, Distort, um, and then make with warp. So it's shift option um, um, command W. Um, and then you can see that I have pretty much the uh, options are the same. 
So if we go up 50 um, and then hit OK. But the main difference with this one is that now I it's warped to a shape that I can then go in and adjust that shape if I want to. So if I zoom in, you can see this shape has been added with these points here. And if I want to adjust this on my own, I can click and drag. Um, if I go to my pen tool, I can add in my own points and drag those, or drag those around. So um, depending on what your goal is and if you want to be able to change things around uh, like this, those are two ways uh, to do that. Um, and uh, you can still edit your text in here as well. So if um, I double click, you can see I can go in here and I can change my text around. And then um, if I want to change colors, it's the exact same as it is when it's not being warped and adjust things as needed. Um, once you edit your text, if you want to get back into uh, edit the envelope distort, just go back up to object, envelope distort, and then edit an envelope. And then I can go and adjust these if I would like. Um, you can also um, um, release it from it. So you can go here and go to release, and then it will give you that shape that it used. So uh, really easy. Um, quite a few built-in options. Um, and best part is that you can still edit all your text. What if you're wanting to make it more of a 3D shape? Is there a way to do that? Uh, it, like, is this the same vein kind of where you would go if you wanted to make these shapes um, 3D looking? No, but that's my tip number two. Okay. So, so just hold on. <laughs> um, okay, so a few other things in here. Um, you can see this text has been um, warped to this shape, this text to this shape, um, um, and so on. Um, so the more complex your shape is, um, the more skewed your text will become. So it's always good to kind of find that out up front um, if you want your text to be able uh, to be readable still. Um, if you don't care, then I guess it doesn't matter. It just makes um, a fun shape. <clears throat> um, okay, now we're going to go on to this example. Um, so to make these, um, I just took my text and then I will distort, make with warp, and then I chose the fish option here. See that? Hit OK. And then it's my other text. And do the same thing except with a negative number. So it's really, really easy. Now, if you want to, if you want to um, warp text to your your own shape, um, we can do that. So down here, you can see um, uh, do this little fish shape here. And then I'm going to bring down this text. And you want you want to make sure that your shape that you're going to warp to is on top. And then do you select them both? Um, and then Option Command C or Object on below and make with top object. And then it will autofill your text for you in that shape. And it's the exact same as the other one where you can go in and edit your text, you can change the colors, you can um, remove it and add it to a new shape. So it's really, really easy. Um, okay, any questions we have on uh, warp text at all? Yes. Where do those shapes come from? Where are you making those shapes? Uh, which one? The ones of these, the fish? Right. So that's one of, of the pre-built ones in, in Tool. So, and it's, you can get to it 
um, both ways. You can go to effect, warp, uh, and then fish. Oh. So just one of these options in here. Or you can go envelope the start, make with warp, and then your options are the exact same here as well. I see. Okay. Very cool. Um, I think that is. Um, oh, okay, okay. And then uh, so on that one fish that you just made, there's no tail on that there fish. Oh, it yes. It looks more like a sideways bowling pin. Sorry. Okay. So I will show you what I did here just so you get um, oops, an idea. Uh, okay. So I'm glad you asked that question. So this is how it was uh, with just the text warp. Um, and then to add on, add on this nose and this fin, um, I just drew an ellipse, um, kind of placed it where I thought it might line up. And then uh, I'm gonna go to outline view, which is um, command Y, or you can go up to view right here. And then I'm gonna draw a square over top of my ellipse, which is about the space where I want it to go to be cut out of. And let me exit outline view, and then select these two shapes together to cut them out. And there's what that are those shape. shortcuts to combine the shapes and text? Or, sorry, so yeah, once you've got it here, what do you use to combine those to make them part of the same oh. shape? So then you, you use your gear pathfinder panel right here, and then go to minus front option. Okay, and then after those are done, to make them a part of the words that are shaped so that they're all the same shape, are you grouping those or how are you getting those together? These right here? Yep. Uh, yeah, so yeah, I would just put them together as a group. Um, you can change this color to match, or you can do it on, a, um, on its own color because it's not actually part of your text. Um, <clears throat> and then for this um, fin here, so um, let me hide my warp bulge right here. So you see it is. Um, Right here's the shape like this, and then I, I went to warp bulge. So let me go to effect uh, warp bulge. Uh, I already have an effect applied, so I'm going to say yes. But and then I went down, down, um, and like that. Like fire. And then just scale it down. Um, and actually, sorry, I think we I adjusted the horizontal on it as well, like this. Mm -hmm. And then just scaled it to kind of fit the shape of that H. And then I just drew um, the shape um, over it. So just draw a square, rotate it. Um, and then I'm going to bring my point to the edge. So, and then um, I'm going to create my own uh, curve. So do shift C. You see what so then the, um, I can make these curves happen on this anchor point. Um, <clears throat> and then if you select just one of these, then you can adjust one at a time. And then like this. Boom, there fish tail. Yep. All right, excellent. I think that answers the questions that we're at now. Someone said it's like magic. Da -da -da! Surprise. <laughs> uh, and just a reminder, we are going to send the recording out. So you can watch that several times and try it on your own uh, to make sure that, you know, it gets burned into your muscle memory, but it's a little bit of Nick magic that takes him like 33 seconds to do all of that. <laughs> so stinking fast. 
Okay. Great, thank you. On number two, uh, creating 3D text and shapes. Um, so this is one of like the easiest things, um, I think, because you don't really have to do a whole lot to it. Um, so you see, I have this text here. Um, I'm going to apply a warp arc to it, so, so, so it has this nice curve. So I'm going to warp, so effect, warp, arc, and figure out these settings. We'll just bring this up just a little bit, like so. Then go to effect, 3D, extrude, and bevel. Um, by default, it has these settings here. I'm not sure why, I guess, just so, you, so, it's, so it has something for you to see. Um, but if I clear all these out, you can see that um, as a straight on view, it does not look like it's 3D. Um, then you can type in um, your own um, items here, or you can use this to rotate your cube. Um, or you can also use the cube itself. You can see the axes that it has. You can play with them uh, if you want to, just like that. So I think um, we're just going to rotate this up a little bit so we can see the bottom. Um, and then extrude depth is uh, it's just how wide or deep that is. So if we go up to 100, you can see that changes. If we go down to 10, it's not quite as, as tall or um, as thick. Um, and then if you want to add um, a bevel, uh, you can choose from the pre-built options here. So let's go to classic. You can see what it does there. Um, you can also change the height of that as well. So we bring this up to 10. Um, you, you can get some really crazy um, shapes off these as well. Let's bring this up just a little more so you can see just how much it can be. <laughs> um, I'm going to get rid of this for now. Um, and then your shading. Uh, if you don't want any, you just want like wireframe. You can just do wireframe, no shading. Uh, which makes everything all just one solid color. Um, and then diffuse and plastic are close to the same. Um, then if you want to get into controlling um, um, your light source, you can go to more options. Uh, and here you can adjust where your light is being shown on your object. And you can control uh, if it's really intense or not intense, the amount of of ambient light that it has on itself, um, all these options. So just depending on what you're looking for um, and how much of it you want um, to control. Um, if I hit OK, again, the, um, it is, this is still our text. So if I want to change this to, you know, Andrew is awesome instead. Easy peasy. Mm -hmm. um, and then we can change color. It takes a lot of effects to make that cool. It what? Andrew is awesome. It takes <laughs> a lot of effects to make that. No, no. 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 Okay, so it's really, really easy. And then if you want to um, go in and do some custom work to it, you can just go to object. Expand appearance, which is going to outline your text, and then it will create all these shapes that it has that you can go in and edit all of them. So if I go into outline view again, you can see all the shapes now that it has with it. So if I want to uh, select all these down here and change these to, I don't know, let's say, this orangey to pink gradient, then you can adjust that um, all on your own. How did you switch it so that it smoothed out like that? Oh, um, so sorry. Um, um, I selected each of these different shapes. And then um, if you hit G to go to your gradient tool, 
um, then you can just click and drag however you want it to. Um, across all of them, okay. Not across, yeah. Okay, so that's 3D text. Um, let's move on to 3D shapes. So all of well, these <laughs> pottery, all of that's these what I'm are just shapes. Or this is a line, this is text letter A, these are just shapes. Um, if I go to outline view, again you can see um, that it's just using the the revolve um, effect. So if um, I select this shape here and go to effect 3D revolve. Um, the settings for this are pretty close to the same. Um, uh, there's just uh, no bevel option here. But again, I can play with the axes on this cube or here on dials. Um, your blend steps uh, it is is how many steps it takes to go from your light to dark. So if I want it to be a little bit more choppy or uh, not as smooth, I can go to five. And you can see that that changed um, that there. So if I go to two, it's, it would be even, uh, even harsher. If you go to like 100, it would be really, really smooth. Um, so again, this text, uh, 3D recalls, and you can play with um, uh, edge to edge, so left to right. When it when you have something that is the same on both sides, <clears throat> when it's mirrored, um, the, this here um, won't change that much. But if we have something that um, is not the same when it's mirrored on left to right. Um, that will change the shape actually pretty um, uh, radically. So left to right. So you have different options there. Um, what, also, where did the shapes come from? Did you just open Illustrator one day and they were born, or how do you uh, how do you create these shapes? How do you import these shapes into your project? The ones that are here. Yep. Uh, so I just threw these um, in here. So um, so this is just text. This A. Uh, this is just um, um, a rectangle. Uh, and then there's a line that I drew. So let's maybe draw one from scratch and see how it looks. So I'm gonna take my pen tool, and I'm just gonna click, click, click around, like that. Okay. And then you go effect 3D revolve, and it does all the work for you. It just spins it around essentially. Mm hmm Okay. Um, yeah, easy peasy. And if I want to adjust this line, these points, I can just shoot the point I want to adjust, move it around, I can add new points to it, and it will auto update for you. Now that's a shape we need in our lives. Yeah, some weird like, it's like bird bath. <laughs> yeah, bird bath or some weird base. I don't know. Uh, um, okay. In the circles and squares, you would just draw a square, right? Or draw a sphere and do the same thing. You draw or uh, draw a circle just using your shape tool, right? And then do the same thing and it would spin and become a sphere or make a square and it would make a cube. Um, no, not not exactly, because this isn't really making it 
3 this isn't making that shape look sorry it, it looks 3d but really what it is it is just make itself a copy and then just rotates around itself um, so if we go into do a square you can see what it would do on a square so you can still make a sphere with a circle but you couldn't make a cube with a square correct um, if you wanted to make this look like a cube um, let me get rid of this effect here. I think I would use, uh, let's see what the extrude and bevel looks like. Um, because that would actually rotate around as you want it to. And you can, you know, I didn't make this uh, really deep, whatever. And then we could probably just play with fills to cover up those ends. Yeah. Yeah, so if you um, expand this now, so this, is, so this is now a group of shapes. Uh, if I ungroup it, so, so Shift-Command-G, and it might need to do it a few times if there's more than one group inside of a group. Oops. Um, then if I double-click into this shape, and it again, uh, oops. Then I'm going to go to okay, I'll select each of these points instead. And then oh, command on the spot. It's okay. And then paste in place, and then you can change this to whatever you want. Okay. And now it's a more of a solid shape. Yeah. Okay. So it's already been a half an hour, and I have three left. So I'm oh, going to move on to the next one. <laughs> we always get stuck here. Well, there's one more question. Can you just talk about if you draw a straight line, how do you make it curved? Is it just you go to the anchor point and you change it from being a straight anchor to a curved anchor? or or? So if I use my line tool and just draw a line that's straight uh, and give it a stroke so you can see it. Um, so um, you can add more points and then curve those points, or you can curve the points that it already has. So if I do Shift C, Shift C is the anchor point tool. Um, so once you have this, then you can click and you can drag and move things around as needed. Um, and if I go back to my pen tool, which is P, and I click to add another um, anchor point, then I I have those same nodes that I can adjust. Um, like so. However, okay. if, you, if you're wanting a really nice, smooth, curved line, uh, I would use this tool right here because it, it, it kind of auto curves for you. So you click, just click, don't drag, just click, and click, and click. So it, it tries to know where you're going to go. Um, and then, of course, after it's drawn, you can um, Go to each point and adjust it if you want to. We just have one more quick question, and we'll move on. I promise. No, um, really. How do you complete a shape? It just keeps on drawing more lines. Can't figure out how to get it out of it if you're just using the pen tool or even the the line tool. Oh, you know, how do you uh, so just hit B on your keyboard to go back to your main select tool. So the issue you're having is like if it keeps drawing, you want to go somewhere else, but it keeps drawing like this. Yeah, just just hit B, uh, B or escape. Oh, I'm just kidding, not escape. Hit B. Okay, V. <laughs> ignore the escape part. All right, moving on. Okie dokie. Um, so I want to show you some easy ways to create a pattern that can can repeat. <clears throat> um, so I downloaded from our icon library these little cute things right here. We got a dog and a cat. Um, <clears throat> uh, so I have these laid out in a mask, which I will go over, but just so you know, that's so if if I go to my outline view, you can see all of them here as a whole. Um, and what you need to keep in mind when you want to create um, 
um, pattern that can go from edge to edge um, and not, not have any seams is whatever you have <clears throat> on the top needs to um, it, it needs to be able to line up on the bottom and what do you, you ever have on the left it needs to line up with what you have on the right. So what I mean by that is if I take this cute little dog um, and I, I find it easiest to work um, uh, on your corners. So I'm just going to line this up on my corners. As you can see right there. Um, and we can adjust it later if we have to, but um, okay, then I'm going to make a copy of this. So hold down Option Shift. So it makes a copy and also will stay in line with it. And click and drag. And then do the same thing again. Option Shift, click and drag. And line this up on this corner right here. So these two points, you see these squares here. Um, and then I'm going to align this to my artboard um, horizontally in the middle. So on my align tool, make sure this is set to align artboard. And then horizontal to the side right. Yeah. Um, okay, so you see um, where this dog is being cut off on the edge of our our board. We need to make sure that all of these, all all of this part of it that's being cut off on top shows up on the bottom edge of this board. So what I mean by that is uh, I'm going to draw a line along the edge of my artboard so uh, I can easily place things down the bottom. And I'll show you what I mean. I'm just going to make this pink so I can see it more easily. Um, and then I'm going to use my align um, tool to align it to the top just to make sure that's lined up. Okay. So now I'm going to select all of these. Okay, zoom out a little bit. And then I need to make, make a copy of these. So again, hold down um, Option and Shift so they don't, so they move around. Oops. And then I'm going to line up that line that I drew at the bottom of my, my artboard. So now what should happen is when, when this pattern become, when it's, when it's being used and it goes edge to edge with itself, you shouldn't see um, a seam because what is on top here should show the bottom when it right here. Um, and I'm not sure if that makes sense or not, but I'm going <laughs> to um, keep going and hopefully by the end it'll make more sense. Okay, so then um, I'm going to take uh, my cat, and let's again just make a copy of it, move it over here, um, and then I'm going to group these two together so I can align them as a align them as a group to my artboard. Um, and then let's see, we have three rows of dogs. Okay, so I'm going to select these and make a copy again. Option shift so they don't they don't move around. Something like that. Now you can see that um, for each row of these, my spacing is is probably off. So what I'm going to do is select and group each row. That one's already grouped. Group these together, which is Command G. Sorry, I just forget. Um, and group these together. So you can see that each of these are now in their own groups, right? Um, then I select all of these. Now you want to make sure that you change this on your align panel to align to selection, not the artboard. Um, and then distribute. Okay, so I was close. Cool. Um, but just just so you you can see how how if I was way off, what that that would look like. So these, so you make sure align to selection. Click here, and then my spacing between each row is even. Okay. Um, 
Now we need to either cut off the edges of these that, are, that hang off our artboard, or I like to hold on them just in case I want to change things later. And so I will put them in a mask. If you put them in a mask, you have to do one more step later, but it's really easy. So um, I would just do that. Um, okay, so I'm gonna select all of these and group all of those so they're in their, their own group um, all together. And then um, I know that my artboard is 300 by 300, so I'm gonna make squares, just click on this, then do double click, and you can type in 300 by 300 or whatever size your artboard is, okay? So then we're going to align this shape up with uh, our um, artboard. So change this back to line artboard, and then we want to center both horizontally and vertically. Okay, so then do select the shape, and then shift click to select the shape, these, this group underneath it. And then you want to go to object, copy mask, make. Okay, so now if I go to my outline view, you can see the the edges of all of our shapes, but they're in a mask. So then to make this an actual pattern fill, you just need to click and drag it into just watches panel. So if you don't have that open, go to window swatches. So I'm gonna select this, click and drag it over here. Um, and then to test this out, let's get rid of it. I'm gonna just draw a shape down here. So M for the shape tool, for draw the shape right here. Um, sorry, let me get rid of the fill in it. Um, and then to fill it with that, with um, our new pattern, you just click on the swatch that you just made. Now you can see that it's not perfect. Um, because remember I said if you use a mask, there's one, one extra step you have to do. So if you double click on the swatch itself, you can go into your pattern edit mode. Um, and you can see that um, it, it's showing 378 for its width, not 300. Um, that's because by default, it wants to make your pattern um, size to the full width and height of all your shapes. But because it's in a mask, um, I want it to be to the size of the mask. So we know that it's 300 by 300. And then now it should line everything up. Um, before I get, before I show you any of the other options, I'm just going to click on done so you can see if it worked or not. Let's zoom in and just see if we have any issues anywhere. And it looks pretty seamless. Okay. And this can fill any shape you want. So if I draw any, uh, any ellipse, which is uh, L, and then fill it with a shape, you can see if I draw my, um, my custom shape, whatever, sorry, we change this so, and then you click on pattern fill, there you go. Um, there are some more options to adjust um, your pattern fills. Um, for this case, since we built it to work edge to edge like this, you might not want to mess with this one, but if you had something a little more abstract, like a bunch of dots or you're creating like, like um, excuse me, um, um, like a brick wall pattern. Um, you can, so again, you open your swatch and then you can see um, your options for tiling. So you can go um, brick by row, brick by column, uh, hex by column, hex by row. Um, so again, I, these are more, I think you can make them more abstract so, so that um, if things get cropped off the valve, they're not as obvious as this. Um, uh, and then you can play with you know, some other options. You want to move gear tile with your art. So if I end up wanting to move my artwork around, um, I can make sure to move my tile with it. You see that moves with it. Um, yeah, I'm not gonna say this, so I'm gonna hit cancel. Um, there, there's really like a million options here. Um, and 
I want to show you more. Um, I also want to show you um, our last two options. So maybe let me show you this one really, really quickly. Um, okay, so if I want to create a new pattern fill, maybe use like some polka dot shapes or whatever. Uh, I just have this little um, ellipsis right here. And I'm going to change it from um, using a stroke to a fill. So you can just click this right here, or you can do Shift uh, X. I'll send it for you. Um, <clears throat> okay, so I'm just going to hold down Option so I can make make a copy of this over and over again. So this probably isn't the most um, um, efficient way to do this, but just to do something really um, fast, we'll do it like this. Let's see. Okay, so then I'm going to select all these. Oops. Just make it easier, I'll put them into a group. Uh, now, I don't have anything hanging off the edge of my upward, so I don't need to put it in a mask. Uh, if you wanted to make sure that this lined up with your spacing around that you have here, you could put it um, in a mask or in a group with a square to the size of your artboard. Uh, but just to see what it does, let's click and drag this over to our swatches panel. And then let me draw in a blank shape here. And then put my fill and then select the swatch we just added. Um, you see that what it does there, uh, there are some things I don't love happening either, like right here. Uh, so if double click into my swatch, um, you can adjust uh, the artwork either in here directly. So I can move things around, you can see. They, here, so I don't love that. what's happening right there. And that's too close to the edge, probably there too. Um, and then you can play more with these options here, uh, just depending on how you want it to look. Um, so if you want something that's a little more abstract, it's really easy to do something like that. And then if you need to adjust your shape size to fill larger, you can just click and drag your edges around and it will auto-fill your pattern with no seams. Okay. It's worthwhile to point out that your original design can be really, really small, right? So you didn't oh, yeah. have to have a larger square that you built that off of. It could have been like four dots all in a really small space. It, it could have, um, but it wouldn't have been as random if there's only four in there. Sure, yeah. sure. But you, can, yeah. you don't have to say, I have to fill out this three-inch by three-inch right. square. Correct. Yep. Um, yep. Okay, I'm going to move on to the next one. We're running out of time. Uh, okay, creating custom pattern brushes. So this is also something that is really easy to do, and there's uh, lots of options for um, kind of the, the end result. Um, so a brush gets applied to a stroke, not a fill. So if you if you draw a line um, with your pen tool or the line tool or with um, your paintbrush tool, so it would be you know a line like this, a line like this, or a line like this. So all of these are lines that have a stroke, and a brush can be applied to that. Um, so you can see here that I have this shape that I just drew um, with my pen tool. Uh, I just kind of did this sort of arching thing. And then uh, to make it the exact same on both sides, I'm going to copy and paste in place. So Command C, Command F. And then a really handy tool to flip things and mirror things if you uh, press O, uh, and then hold down Shift. You can see I can flip it around really fast and easy. Um, so then I drag this over here to this line up, and then using my direct um, select tool, which is A, I'm going to select these two points and join them, which is Command J. Now that I did that so that my sides were equal. They were the exact same arch on both sides. And now I can adjust oops, this arch if I would 
would like to in, 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 in. Yep. Um, okay, so once you have kind of your shape you want to play with, make your brush. Um, open your brushes panel. If you don't have it open already, go to Window Brushes right there. And then you select um, your shape or your lines that you want to make a brush out of. And then this little plus button right here, you can click New Brush. And then we're doing um, a pattern brush. So then hit OK. It will open up all these things here. Um, for now, just leave everything um, as default. Um, and then we'll hit OK. Um, and then I'm going to draw a new ellipse. So L, just so I have that shape there. And so I want to change my brush that's being used on this stroke. So if I go to the one that we just added right here, you click that, and it will auto fill around that for you. Um, you can adjust the weight of your stroke now. So I go to five. Oh, I'm to, I let's go down instead. 0.5. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so if I go to my outline view, you can see that I just have an ellipse and a square. And both of these have this brush that I created before, that one. Um, uh, but, uh, this one right here is being used on it. Um, and then I create this little X kind of shape. And again, do the exact same thing. Select, go to new brush. Um, and then you just take your shape that has a stroke and you select that there. So you change back and forth. You can see what I have. Um, squares can be weird sometimes because corners get pretty skewed. Um, so these work a lot better with an ellipse or um, 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 a curved line. Um, okay, let me go over here and show you a couple other options with it. So I just have this hexagon with, with a line through it. And I said the exact same thing, we're gonna create new pattern brush. Okay, left everything as, a, as it is. Um, if you want to play around later with the settings, you can see what they do, but we're almost out of time, so I'm not going to do that. Um, again, this is just an ellipse that I drew and a square, and just chose this as its um, brush for the stroke. Um, so let me show you if I just want to draw some random abstract line here. Okay, and then I'm going to choose this brush to fill it with. There you go. Really easy, and you can you can create. I mean, just about um, anything you um, want with it. Let me show you one more really quick with this sort of uh, wave or blade type shape. So I just drew this with my pen tool. Um, select it. Choose the pattern brush. The defaults for now, and then if I select this ellipse and this, pretty cool. And you see, I think it's big, um, chopped off a little weird um, in these corners, but on any ellipse, it looks pretty nice. Okay, I know um, that was really fast. Hopefully that all makes sense. Um, and as you play with it, you'll learn kind of what works or does not work. Um, do we have any questions on this before we move on to the next one? Uh, no, actually. There is a okay. comment that says you're a wizard, but uh, <laughs> no questions. It's not me as the tool. You just got to just know what to do with it. Okay, creating a scatter brush. So this is the same, but not the same. Not the same. This will allow you to um, apply different shapes to a stroke that appear like they are random and being scattered 
on that stroke. So what I mean by that is, you can see I just drew just like a bunch, like right here I have some dots, and then some triangles right here. Um, and then if I select this group here and go up to new brush, this time we're gonna choose a scatter brush, okay? And then for right now, leave everything the exact same by default, and then hit okay. Um, and then if I go to my outline view, you can see that I just have this line right here. Now this line is has this new scatter brush applied to it. Um, just one that I, I did before is being selected, but if I select this one, you can see um, that it's just applying this this group of shapes to this line over and over again. Um, now to get a, a more randomized kind of feel, um, if we go into this brush, um, we can play with um, changing these from fixed to random. So size will um, change its size, obviously. Uh, same with spacing, we'll adjust how things are being spaced apart or if they are closer together. Um, and then scatter, uh, we'll, we'll scatter the, the actual group of shapes that are there. Um, so we're just going to adjust that just a little bit. And then rotation, we'll randomize the rotation of each one. Um, I don't want that in this one, so we won't get that fixed. So once I have those, how I like them, I'm going to hit OK. It will ask you if you want to apply to the stroke that's there. Yes. Um, and now, because it, it's got some randomness to it, if, if I click on this brush again while my line's highlighted, it will change because it, it's trying to be, uh, it's, it, it's applying all of, of, of those randomness things that we added to it. Oops. So let's do the same thing with this um, group of dots. So again, I just use my brush tool um, and you can scale the size of the brush up and down by left and right brackets. Oops, let me go back to a default brush first for this. Okay, so scaling the brush up and down with left and right brackets, you can see it gets larger, smaller. So I just drew you know, some random dots in here like this, whatever. Okay, so then now I'm going to do the same thing with these. Go to new brush. Oops. Make sure you're drawing the right panel. Uh, and then scatter brush. Uh, and for now, we'll just leave these um, alone as their default. And then let's just see how this line would look with this being applied to it. Yeah? Not amazing. It's fine. Um, so maybe we want to go in here and change the randomness of these as well. Yes, there you go. I know it's better already. Uh, hit OK. Apply stroke. Um, and these can be applied to to any shape that has um, a stroke. So if I draw this ellipse right here. And then they're hard to see because they're white, sorry, but they're, they're right here. Scatter brush tree is one I just barely made. You can see it just applies that brush to that stroke right there. You can do the back to my triangle one there. Because they're randomized, you can click again and just kind of choose one that you think fits the best for what you're working on. Um, so you can draw any shape, you can bring in any icon that you want and create your, your own brush. Um, maybe just for kicks really quickly, we'll uh, try to make a brush with one of these shapes here. So let me copy this down that I probably have in here. And paste them over here. Um, and we'll scale them up and down to get some variety of things happening. This may look really stupid. I'm not sure, but we'll see. Very possible, I don't know. But that's how you learn how things work or not, right? Right. It's boring. Okay, so those are grouped now together. New scatter brush. 
here and those same. Kind of stupid. Okay. So, but really, you can you can use anything you want. Okay, I know that was also really if fast. Like photos. Uh, images. I actually don't know for sure. Okay. So when you say anything you want, you mean more like. Chips. I wouldn't be surprised if you could. Um, sure. Any any shape you draw or or yeah that, that you bring in. Okay. Do we have any other questions about anything? That was the only one. Um, here we are at minute fifty eight. So hold on, I guess. <laughs> And that always... uh, now that you ask for questions, some more are coming in. Um, you don't change the weight of the pen, you just change the size of the scatter. Um, you can do both. So if I select this here and go to weight, put on 10, you can see that it will scale as well. 0.5. Um, and if you click in here again, you can uh, change the size a bit right here as well. Okay, I see. And then is it possible to create scatter brushes with 3D objects? Uh, like the ones that we just created? Right. That are not like actually 3D objects, but they just look 3D in tool? You know? I don't know. Let's try and see. Oh, it's a fishing pen now. <laughs> Looks like it's working. Well, bam. There it is. So the answer is yes to that question. Excellent. No other questions. Okay. All right, well, hopefully um, you guys learned something new and you're able to kind of take this and go explore on your own. Awesome, right, thank you. Us. Yeah. I'm going to take the screen back just for a second here. Uh, we're going to move this as well just to make sure. All right, so uh, you used the, that cat and dog. We're from our icon library, is that right? Correct. And uh, we also just launched a huge stock asset uh, library upgrade. We used to have 3.5 million stock images uh, in, our, in our asset library. Now we have 120 million stock assets. So, I mean, the things you can do with those and get started, just a jump start in your work with the, the, the stock library and the icon library. You can try those out with a seven-day free trial. The information is there on the screen. Uh, if you have more questions, you can send us an email to info at elearningbrothers.com. If you'd like to get set up or really get walked through the other things that are inside of our library, uh, when it comes to templates, when it comes to graphics, when it comes to audio, we've got videos, we've got all of these great things. You can give us a call at 801-796-2767 or just visit elearningbrothers.com for more information. Thanks again, Nick. This has been super, super useful. And Thank uh, thanks everyone for joining us. We'll, we hope we'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye. Thanks. -bye. Thank you.